Did you know a pair of these beetles used to cost around 1400 US dollars? This is Mesotopus tyrandus and Regius respectively, and nowadays you can easily get them for way, way less. But let's learn about their early tenuous breeding journey and everything that makes these African jewels so expensive. In 1999, Japan began to allow several new beetle species into the country, and these beetles were one of them. The beetle hobby was already thriving with the abundance of charismatic native species, but Japan opened the floodgates to exotic beetles, and this hobby leveled up like Charmander skipping Charmeleon all the way to Charizard, or like sublimation for you chemistry nerds. Of course, this first generation of wild species were all incredible expensive, especially for unique stag beetles like Mesotopus. Okay, let me geek over how cool these beetles are for a second because they are physically a very impressive stag beetle. These guys are big and bulky, jet black with a beautiful glossy sheen, and their mandibles are thick, jagged, but most of all, straight up intimidating. If there's any beetle that I do not want to get pinched by, this is up there on the list, especially because these guys just don't let go. I've got Tyrandus and Regius here, and the difference between the two, besides the obvious selective bread differences, is their jaw shape. Tyrandus have got these scary forked pincers, while Regius is, is a little more scimitar-like. Again, I will not mess with either of them because the tactics I described about in this video are ineffective against these behemoths. Now, I want to talk about this Regius a bit more because this one in particular has been selectively bred for. Of course, that white eye is noticeable and soul piercing, but under a bright light, you'll see a red tinge on their elytra. That redness is best seen in Regius, but Regardless, both Mesotopus species are absolutely gorgeous. And I'm not going to forget about the female because they are equally chunky, huge, and glossy. Like my god, for a female beetle, this thing is massive. She's even got little stubs on her head like a crown to a queen. However, not only are these beetles strikingly beautiful, they have another trick up their sleeve that is insanely rare across stag species, and that's... Oh, sorry, my phone rang. Just kidding, that was the frickin' beetle. Many rhino species can vibrate their body and create a variety of squeaking noises, but these stags can do it too, making a vibrating sound like a silenced phone. But why? Honestly, no clue. It could be self-defense or a broader stress response, communication, I don't know. But considering how rare this ability is, especially for stag beetles, there must be something in the African jungle that this is for. Because these beetles are so visually striking and perceptively more exotic coming all the way from Central Africa, these guys fetched a very pretty penny on their initial importation. Year over year, the newly imported species started to descend in price as breeders and hobbyists bred them easily with flake soil and traditional techniques, but not Tyrandus or Regius. These black diamonds demanded only the best rearing conditions and your run-of-the-mill flake soil wasn't cutting it. So breeding experimentation begins. Some tried high quality flake soil from different tree species. It failed. Some tried various breeding logs from Africa. It failed too. Some tried both of those with different setups and again, it failed. And then someone tried using kimchi. Okay, it failed again. But someone then tried kimchi with specifically turkey tail fungi and it just worked. For those that don't know what this is, well, it's a substrate made from wood inoculated by white rot fungi, usually species like oyster mushrooms or the hero of our story, the turkey tail. Although a popular strategy to breed the biggest and baddest boys of today, it was a relatively new breeding technique back then, and when news broke out that it works for Mesotopus, the internet forums went wild. After discovering the hurdle of how to actually prompt the female to lay eggs, beetle fact, they're actually kind of of green, it's pretty cool. It was smooth sailing from there. As long as you feed them kinchi with the correct fungi, the female will lay eggs directly there and the hatched larvae can munch on and develop into impressive adults. Nowadays, there's a lot of domestically bred Tyrandus and Regius, but they're not cheap because, you know, 
they're just so cool and they're in high demand. The guys that I have are honestly chumps. No offense, please don't pinch me. Compared to the world record sizes. So let's officially learn everything that makes these beetles so sought after and how big they can really get. Also, if you like the video so far and like learning about beetles, like and subscribe. But back to hailing from the jungles of Central Africa, particularly Cameroon and both Congos. Their scientific name, Mesotopus, literally means middle region, likely referring to their place of origin, while Tarandus means reindeer. Ah yes, once again, the stag connection. And Regius means royal or kingly. There was a time where Regius was debated to be a subspecies to Tarandus, but it's now widely accepted that they're separate species, of which supports a decent income for some villagers as collectors and middlemen flock to grab a wild species. I'll talk about that fascinating microeconomy in another video. But what makes these guys so great for beetle keeping is their long life life cycle. Larvae usually develop around 7 to 12 months, but their adult lives can last 1 to 2 years, which is absolutely amazing for stag beetles. Now, this is a blessing and a ridiculously minor curse because they will gobble up your jelly or fruit as they are very hungry hungry cat or I mean beetles, so they do rack up a decent lifetime cost as compared to other species. And that's not even including breeding, which then you'll have to buy kimchi, which is a lot pricier than flake soil. But for competitive breeders aiming to break size records, it's a must to regulate kinchi and replace as necessary to maximize nutrition for the larvae. Diligently keep track of your larvae and you might have the next largest Mesotopus tyrandus if it's bigger than... Wait, am I reading that right? 94.5 millimeters. And for Regius, a whopping 96.4. Like I said, they're significantly larger than mine. And full disclosure, I got these for $55 USD, but the large ones will go for hundreds as fanatics scramble to breed the next world record. These beetles are absolutely incredible, and I hope you enjoyed learning more about them. Check out this video about Africa's beetle economy if it's out. And as always, thank you to my members' infinite patience and support, and I hope y'all have a great rest of your day.